Oh, hey. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, today we are going through my Call of Legends binder. We got a little bit of glitter going on here. The, uh, the logo on the front. This one uh, feels like it's got some cards in it, so hopefully we have a pretty good uh, pretty good selection. We have here the Clefable, the Deoxys, the Dialga. I feel like this uh, Call of Legends is getting back into the artwork that is uh, similar to uh, the Heart Gold Soul Silver base, uh, which had a very kind of distinct look to it. Like you can almost pick out a card and know immediately that it's uh, that it's from there. We got some reverses on the back side here. We got the Groudon in the reverse, but not in the Hollow. We have a reverse Gyarados. This is a pretty neat one. Um, where he's underwater, kind of uh, looks like he's gonna come up out of the water. Different, uh, definitely a different pers perspective of uh, Gyarados that you don't usually see, uh, and stands out for that reason. The Jirachi is really cool. I know the uh, the background is kind of simplistic, but uh, it gets away with it because of the uh, because of the fact that it's hollow. Um, it can do that and not look awkward or like rushed. We have a another Nine Tails by Tokia. Uh, got the stone there again. I think it's probably largely the maybe it's the Tokia arts that have the stones. Only I haven't really uh, pieced that together. I just know that uh, there are certainly all the evolution Pokemon Pokemon that uh, that evolve with the stone typically have the stone in the artwork, or at least a lot of them do. We have a ton of hollows in the set. We're still in the uh, the holographics here. Really like that Smeargle with the other Smeargle. I don't know if they're like working together to paint something. Umbreon here, really cool. Cleffa, I love that the uh, the Cleffas are usually pretty useful. Uh, this one has that eek uh, attack, which shuffles your hand in your deck and then draws six cards, uh, and then he falls asleep. So basically. Cleffa always ends up being a uh, draw, uh, a, uh, a method to draw cards, uh, which is typically pretty good in the game because the faster you can get through your deck to set your stuff up, the uh, the better of a position that you put yourself in. This uh, Snorlax is really, really neat. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing there. Um, channeling some kind of... Uh, some kind of a ball, magic ball, vortex. We have a pretty ugly type Typhlosion down there. Sorry, Himeno. I know there's a lot of uh, really nice Himeno art, but I don't know. There's just uh, something about that Typhlosion that's a little bit on the uh, derpy side. We have Mr. Mime. Looks like he's going to get hit by something. He's trying to block it. An Ursa Ring, doing like a cross, you know, he's doing the cross chop, just like the ability says. Very neat. Uh, as I mentioned, I really love when they uh, they match the attacks to the actual artwork. It uh, really adds another kind of uh, layer to it. Flareon with his Firestone. Dolteon, same thing. He's got the uh, Thunderstone there. So I guess I was wrong. It's not just the Hameno, or not the Hameno, the uh, Tokia arts that have the uh, the stones. Um, it seems like most, if not all, of the Pokemon that evolve from a stone have uh, have it in the artwork. Although, I'm pretty sure Clefairy evolves from a stone, right? And he doesn't have one. Vaporeon sure does, though. There's the Water Stone in that one. Beautiful art there. Uh, I don't know if it's pronounced Sui. Someone please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Really neat. Uh, I don't know if it's it's not necessarily one of my favorites, but it certainly stands out. That uh, Eevee there with the just the way that he's lit up with the the moonlight and or the street lighting. It's kind of neat. And as well as this, uh, there's a lot of really good coughing art. I don't know if it's just like the smug look that he always has. 
but there's there's quite a few that are very enjoyable. That's probably one of my favorite Magmars. Um, it's tough to make a a Magmar look cool. He's basically like a guy in a chicken costume with head tumors that breathes fire. So there's only uh, so many things you can do to make him look badass, and they uh, they definitely accomplished uh, that there. So here's their other Tokia Mawal. I was quite certain that there were two of them. Um, and I really like this one as well. So I like that cost contrasting colors. The background is a little bit simple. I always prefer uh, if there's something like interactive or actually going on with the background that involves the Pokemon. But uh, you get that they can't all, all be like that. And sometimes it's just nice to kind of see uh, some contrasting colors to really make the Pokemon pop off the, uh, off the card. Here we go, we got uh, another Tokia Vulpix, so uh, she's getting lots of work uh, in these sets. Uh, which is, I feel like, there's the artists that were used for the, I guess, the Heart Gold Soul Silver sort of era, um, really define it more than anything. Here we go, um, we have a couple of the shiny boys at the bottom here. We have the Ente, uh, what is he, SL3. So some more shinies, these ones being a little bit more uh, elaborate than the uh, the ones from Platinum. This guy is severely uh, heavy on the right side, but uh, it's just kind of what I, what I come came across so I don't know if there was somebody that uh, that had one that was centered better than that and uh, just really liked off-center crowd ons I'd probably probably be willing to trade um, the uh, the miscut stuff uh, is neat but uh, doesn't really do a lot for me Oh, we do have one of those uh, reverse energies, so we can take him out. He's probably more expensive than a lot of the cards that we've been looking at. So they have these uh, foil versions of those uh, hard gold soul silver base uh, energies with the uh, the Pokemon in the background. That one with the uh, pseudo voodoo. We have a shiny ho -Oh. That's pretty cool. I don't know. My camera doesn't want to focus now. But, uh, shiny ho -Oh. Shiny Kyogre, which is really neat because he turns purple. And, uh, I guess probably the most expensive and or most exciting, the shiny Rayquaza. Neat. Uh, let's see what we have at the back. I don't think anything. Oh, no. We have a lonely little Tangrowth here uh, with the shattered foil. Uh, probably from a theme deck. I say probably. I'm almost certain that it is. I uh, just want to be uh, a little bit careful so that I'm not uh, giving anyone some misinformation. Uh, with a lot of those variants, um, not super hardcore on them. And there's a lot of weird things that uh, Pokemon has done over the years in terms of non hollows hollows different foil stamps and everything else that uh, I don't have a lot of them um, when I do find them I usually pick them up and put them in the back um, it's not my main uh, priority where I have so much of the the actual main sets missing that uh, I'd rather get that banged out and then maybe someday in my Pokemon retirement uh, retirement phase then I can look at those and just be opening modern um, I think that's the, the end goal, is to get uh, one of each English card. Um, maybe at that point just slowly work at uh, some weird variant stuff, uh, errors and stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, just uh, continue. I, I mean, I haven't really, I'm still doing it at the moment. Uh, enjoying the uh, opening modern um, with other people, especially uh, other people in person is really fun. And then trading as well. Like, it just brings you straight back to uh, if you collected and traded Pokemon as a kid, 
Um, it's just that much more meaningful and exciting to trade somebody in real life rather than uh, just go online and fill your cart with every card in the set and uh, finish the binder. So that's kind of a large reason why I don't just uh, finish one set at a time. I kind of like that there's still some cards missing, um, still something to search for. And eventually it'll get down to the point where if I'm missing like a few cards from a set, then I'll usually just grab them. Um, but uh, yeah, trading, it's definitely the way to go. It's, uh, it's fun. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to trading more, few, more people in the future. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.